Chapter 29 On the first day of the seventh month, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. It is a day for you to sound the trumpets. As an aroma pleasing to the Lord, prepare a burnt offering of one young bull, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bull, prepare a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. With the ram, two-tenths, and with each of the seven lambs, one-tenth. Include one male goat as a sin offering to make atonement for you. These are in addition to the monthly and daily burnt offerings with their grain offerings and drink offerings as specified. They are offerings made to the Lord by fire, a pleasing aroma. On the tenth day of this seventh month, hold a sacred assembly. You must deny yourselves and do no work. Present as an aroma pleasing to the Lord a burnt offering of one young bull, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old all without defect. With the bull, prepare a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. With the ram, two-tenths, and with each of the seven lambs, one-tenth. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the sin offering for atonement and the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings. On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. Celebrate a festival to the Lord for seven days. Present an offering made by fire as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, a burnt offering of thirteen young bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With each of the thirteen bulls, prepare a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. With each of the two rams, two-tenths, and with each of the fourteen lambs, one-tenth. Include one male goat as a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the second day, prepare twelve young bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs a year old all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings. On the third day, prepare eleven bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the numbers specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the fourth day, prepare ten bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the fifth day, prepare nine bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the sixth day, prepare eight bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the numbers specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the seventh day, prepare seven bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the numbers specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the eighth day, hold an assembly and do no regular work. Present an offering made by fire as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, a burnt offering of one bull, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bull, the ram, and the lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the numbers specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. In addition to what you vow and your free will offerings, prepare these for the Lord at your appointed feasts, your burnt offerings, grain offerings, drink offerings, and fellowship offerings. Moses told the Israelites all that the Lord commanded him.
chapter 30. Moses said to the heads of the tribes of Israel, This is what the Lord commands. When a man makes a vow to the Lord or takes an oath to obligate himself by a pledge, he must not break his word, but must do everything he said. When a young woman still living in her father's house makes a vow to the Lord or obligates herself by a pledge and her father hears about her vow or pledge but says nothing to her, then all her vows and every pledge by which she obligated herself will stand. But if her father forbids her when he hears about it, none of her vows or the pledges by which she obligated herself will stand. The Lord will release her because her father has forbidden her. If she marries after she makes a vow, or after her lips utter a rash promise by which she obligates herself, and her husband hears about it but says nothing to her, then her vows or the pledges by which she obligated herself will stand. But if her husband forbids her when he hears about it, he nullifies the vow that obligates her or the rash promise by which she obligates herself, and the Lord will release her. Any vow or obligation taken by a widow or divorced woman will be binding on her. If a woman living with her husband makes a vow or obligates herself by a pledge under oath and her husband hears about it but says nothing to her and does not forbid her, then all her vows or the pledges by which she obligated herself will stand. But if her husband nullifies them when he hears about them, then none of the vows or pledges that came from her lips will stand. Her husband has nullified them, and the Lord will release her. Her husband may confirm or nullify any vow she makes or any sworn pledge to deny herself. But if her husband says nothing to her about it from day to day, then he confirms all her vows or the pledges binding on her. He confirms them by saying nothing to her when he hears about them. If, however, he nullifies them some time after he hears about them, then he is responsible for her guilt. These are the regulations the Lord gave Moses concerning relationships between a man and his wife and between a father and his young daughter still living in his house. Chapter 31 The Lord said to Moses, Take vengeance on the Midianites for the Israelites. After that, you will be gathered to your people. So Moses said to the people, Arm some of your men to go to war against the Midianites and to carry out the Lord's vengeance on them. Send into battle a thousand men from each of the tribes of Israel. So twelve thousand men armed for battle, a thousand from each tribe, were supplied from the clans of Israel. Moses sent them into battle, a thousand from each tribe, along with Phinehas, son of Eleazar the priest, who took with him articles from the sanctuary and the trumpets for signaling. They fought against Midian as the Lord commanded Moses and killed every man. Among their victims were Evi, Recham, Zur, Hur, and Reba, the five kings of Midian. They also killed Balaam, son of Beor, with the sword. The Israelites captured the Midianite women and children and took all the Midianite herds, flocks, and goods as plunder. They burned all the towns where the Midianites had settled, as well as all their camps. They took all the plunder and spoils, including the people and animals, and brought the captives, spoils, and plunder to Moses and Eleazar the priest and the Israelite assembly at their camp on the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. Moses, Eleazar the priest, and all the leaders of the community went to meet them outside the camp. Moses was angry with the officers of the army, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds who returned from the battle. Have you allowed all the women to live? He asked them. They were the ones who followed Balaam's advice and were the means of turning the Israelites away from the Lord in what happened at Peor, so that a plague struck the Lord's people. Now kill all the boys and kill every woman who has slept with a man, but save for yourselves every girl who has never slept with a man. All of you who have killed anyone or touched anyone who was killed must stay outside the camp seven days. On the third and seventh days, you must purify yourselves and your captives. Purify every garment as well as everything made of leather, goat hair, or wood. Then Eleazar the priest said to the soldiers who had gone into battle, This is the requirement of the law that the Lord gave Moses. 
Gold, silver, bronze, iron, tin, lead, and anything else that can withstand fire must be put through the fire, and then it will be clean. But it must also be purified with the water of cleansing, and whatever cannot withstand fire must be put through that water. On the seventh day, wash your clothes, and you will be clean. Then you may come into the camp. The Lord said to Moses, You and Eleazar the priest and the family heads of the community are to count all the people and animals that were captured. Divide the spoils between the soldiers who took part in the battle and the rest of the community. From the soldiers who fought in the battle, set apart as tribute for the Lord one out of every five hundred, whether persons, cattle, donkeys, sheep, or goats. Take this tribute from their half share and give it to Eleazar the priest as the Lord's part. From the Israelites' half, select one out of every fifty, whether persons, cattle, donkeys, sheep, goats, or other animals. Give them to the Levites, who are responsible for the care of the Lord's tabernacle. So Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. The plunder remaining from the spoils that the soldiers took was 675,000 sheep, 72,000 cattle, 61,000 donkeys, and 32,000 women who had never slept with a man. The half share of those who fought in the battle was 337,500 sheep, of which the tribute for the Lord was 675. 36,000 cattle, of which the tribute for the Lord was 72. 30,500 donkeys, of which the tribute for the Lord was 61. 16,000 people, of which the tribute for the Lord was 32. Moses gave the tribute to Eleazar the priest as the Lord's part, as the Lord commanded Moses. The half belonging to the Israelites, which Moses set apart from that of the fighting men, the community's half, was 337,500 sheep, 36,000 cattle, 30,500 donkeys, and 16,000 people. From the Israelites' half, Moses selected one out of every 50 persons and animals, as the Lord commanded him, and gave them to the Levites, who were responsible for the care of the Lord's tabernacle. Then the officers who were over the units of the army, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, went to Moses and said to him, Your servants have counted the soldiers under our command, and not one is missing. So we have brought as an offering to the Lord the gold articles each of us acquired, armlets, bracelets, signet rings, earrings, and necklaces, to make atonement for ourselves before the Lord. Moses and Eleazar the priest accepted from them the gold, all the crafted articles. All the gold from the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds that Moses and Eleazar presented as a gift to the Lord weighed 16,750 shekels. Each soldier had taken plunder for himself. Moses and Eleazar the priest accepted the gold from the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds and brought it into the tent of meeting as a memorial for the Israelites before the Lord. Chapter 32 The Reubenites and Gadites, who had very large herds and flocks, saw that the lands of Jazer and Gilead were suitable for livestock. So they came to Moses and Eleazar the priest and to the leaders of the community and said, Ataroth, Dibon, Jazer, Nimrah, Heshbon, Eliela, Sebam, Nebo, and Beon, the land the Lord subdued before the people of Israel, are suitable for livestock, and your servants have livestock. If we have found favor in your eyes, they said, let this land be given to your servants as our possession. Do not make us cross the Jordan. Moses said to the Gadites and Reubenites, Shall your countrymen go to war while you sit here? Why do you discourage the Israelites from going over into the land the Lord has given them? This is what your fathers did when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to look over the land. After they went up to the valley of Eshkol and viewed the land, they discouraged the Israelites from entering the land the Lord had given them. The Lord's anger was aroused that day, and he swore this oath. Because they have not followed me wholeheartedly, not one of the men twenty years old or more who came up out of Egypt will see the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not one, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, son of Nun, for they followed the Lord wholeheartedly. The Lord's anger burned against Israel, and he made them wander in the desert forty years, until the whole generation of those who had done evil in his sight was gone. 
And here you are, a brood of sinners, standing in the place of your fathers and making the Lord even more angry with Israel. If you turn away from following him, he will again leave all this people in the desert, and you will be the cause of their destruction. Then they came up to him and said, We would like to build pens here for our livestock and cities for our women and children. But we are ready to arm ourselves and go ahead of the Israelites until we have brought them to their place. Meanwhile, our women and children will live in fortified cities for protection from the inhabitants of the land. We will not return to our homes until every Israelite has received his inheritance. We will not receive any inheritance with them on the other side of the Jordan, because our inheritance has come to us on the east side of the Jordan. Then Moses said to them, If you will do this, if you will arm yourselves before the Lord for battle, and if all of you will go armed over the Jordan before the Lord until he has driven his enemies out before him, then... When the land is subdued before the Lord, you may return and be free from your obligation to the Lord and to Israel. And this land will be your possession before the Lord. But if you fail to do this, you will be sinning against the Lord, and you may be sure that your sin will find you out. Build cities for your women and children and pens for your flocks, but do what you have promised. The Gadites and Reubenites said to Moses, We, your servants, will do as our Lord commands. Our children and wives, our flocks and herds, will remain here in the cities of Gilead. But your servants, every man armed for battle, will cross over to fight before the Lord, just as our Lord says. Then Moses gave orders about them to Eleazar the priest and Joshua son of Nun, and to the family heads of the Israelite tribes. He said to them, If the Gadites and Reubenites, every man armed for battle, cross over the Jordan with you before the Lord, then when the land is subdued before you, give them the land of Gilead as their possession. But if they do not cross over with you armed, they must accept their possession with you in Canaan. The Gadites and Reubenites answered, Your servants will do what the Lord has said. We will cross over before the Lord into Canaan armed. But the property we inherit will be on this side of the Jordan. Then Moses gave to the Gadites, the Reubenites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the whole land with its cities and the territory around them. The Gadites built up Dibon, Ataroth, Aror, Atrothshophan, Jazer, Jogbaha, Beth Nimrah, and Beth Heron as fortified cities, and built pens for their flocks. And the Reubenites rebuilt Heshbon, Eliela, and Kiriathaim, as well as Nebo and Baalmeon, these names were changed, and Sibma. They gave names to the cities they rebuilt. The descendants of Machir, son of Manasseh, went to Gilead, captured it, and drove out the Amorites who were there. So Moses gave Gilead to the Makerites, the descendants of Manasseh, and they settled there. Jair, a descendant of Manasseh, captured their settlements and called them Habath Jair. And Noba captured Kenath and its surrounding settlements and called it Noba after himself. Chapter 33 Here are the stages in the journey of the Israelites when they came out of Egypt by divisions under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. At the Lord's command, Moses recorded the stages in their journey. This is their journey by stages. The Israelites set out from Ramesses on the 15th day of the first month, the day after the Passover. They marched out boldly in full view of all the Egyptians who were burying all their firstborn, whom the Lord had struck down among them, for the Lord had brought judgment on their gods. The Israelites left Ramesses and camped at Succoth. They left Succoth and camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. They left Etham, turned back to Pihahiroth, to the east of Baal Zephon, and camped near Migdal. They left Pihahiroth and passed through the sea into the desert, and when they had traveled for three days in the desert of Etham, they camped at Merah. They left Merah and went to Elam, where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they camped there. They left Elam and camped by the Red Sea. They left the Red Sea and camped in the desert of Sin. They left the desert of Sin and camped at Dofka. They left Dofka and camped at Elush. 
they left Elish and camped at Rephidim, where there was no water for the people to drink. They left Rephidim and camped in the desert of Sinai. They left the desert of Sinai and camped at Kibroth Hateva. They left Kibroth Hateva and camped at Haziroth. They left Haziroth and camped at Rithma. They left Rithma and camped at Rimon Piraz. They left Rimon Piraz and camped at Libna. They left Libna and camped at Rissa. They left Rissa and camped at Kihalatha. They left Kihalatha and camped at Mount Shefer. They left Mount Shefer and camped at Hareda. They left Hareda and camped at Machiloth. They left Machiloth and camped at Tehath. They left Tehath and camped at Terra. They left Terra and camped at Mithka. They left Mithka and camped at Hashmona. They left Hashmona and camped at Mosiroth. They left Mosiroth and camped at Benijaikon. They left Benijaikon and camped at Horhagidgad. They left Horhagidgad and camped at Jotbatha. They left Jotbatha and camped at Abrona. They left Abrona and camped at Ezion Geber. They left Ezion Geber and camped at Kadesh in the desert of Zin. They left Kadesh and camped at Mount Hor on the border of Edom. At the Lord's command, Aaron the priest went up Mount Hor, where he died on the first day of the fifth month of the fortieth year after the Israelites came out of Egypt. Aaron was a hundred and twenty-three years old when he died on Mount Hor. The Canaanite king of Arad, who lived in the Negev of Canaan, heard that the Israelites were coming. They left Mount Hor and camped at Zalmona. They left Zalmona and camped at Punan. They left Punan and camped at Oboth. They left Oboth and camped at Aya Abarim on the border of Moab. They left Ayam and camped at Dibon Gad. They left Dibon Gad and camped at Almon Diblotheim. They left Almon Diblotheim and camped in the mountains of Abarim near Nebo. They left the mountains of Abarim and camped on the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. There on the plains of Moab, they camped along the Jordan from Beth Jeshemoth to Abel Shittim. On the plains of Moab, by the Jordan across from Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into Canaan, drive out all the inhabitants of the land before you, destroy all their carved images and their cast idols, and demolish all their high places. Take possession of the land and settle in it, for I have given you the land to possess. Distribute the land by lot, according to your clans, to a larger group, give a larger inheritance, and to a smaller group, a smaller one. Whatever falls to them by lot will be theirs. Distribute it according to your ancestral tribes. But if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land, those you allow to remain will become barbs in your eyes and thorns in your sides. They will give you trouble in the land where you will live. And then I will do to you what I plan to do to them. Chapter 34 the Lord said to Moses, Command the Israelites and say to them, When you enter Canaan, the land that will be allotted to you as an inheritance will have these boundaries. Your southern side will include some of the desert of Zin, along the border of Edom. On the east, your southern boundary will start from the end of the Salt Sea, cross south of Scorpion Pass, continue on to Zin, and go south of Kadesh Barnea. Then it will go to Hazer Adder, and over to Asmon, where it will turn, join the Wadi of Egypt, and end at the sea. Your western boundary will be the coast of the Great Sea. This will be your boundary on the west. For your northern boundary, run a line from the Great Sea to Mount Hor, and from Mount Hor to Lebohamoth. Then the boundary will go to Zedad, continue to Ziphron, and end at Hazer Enon. This will be your boundary on the north. For your eastern boundary, run a line from Hazer Enon to Shephom. The boundary will go down from Shephom to Ribla on the east side of Ain and continue along the slopes east of the Sea of Kinnereth. Then the boundary will go down along the Jordan and end at the Salt Sea. This will be your land with its boundaries on every side. Moses commanded the Israelites, Assign this land by lot as an inheritance. The Lord has ordered that it be given to the nine and a half tribes, 
because the families of the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. These two and a half tribes have received their inheritance on the east side of the Jordan of Jericho, toward the sunrise. The Lord said to Moses, These are the names of the men who are to assign the land for you as an inheritance, Eleazar the priest, and Joshua son of Nun, and appoint one leader from each tribe to help assign the land. These are their names, Caleb son of Jephunneh from the tribe of Judah, Shemuel son of Amihud from the tribe of Simeon, Elidad son of Kislon from the tribe of Benjamin, Buckeye, son of Joglai, the leader from the tribe of Dan. Haniel, son of Ephod, the leader from the tribe of Manasseh, son of Joseph. Kemuel, son of Shiphtan, the leader from the tribe of Ephraim, son of Joseph. Elizaphan, son of Parnak, the leader from the tribe of Zebulun. Paltiel, son of Azan, the leader from the tribe of Issachar. Ahihud, son of Shalomai, the leader from the tribe of Asher. Pedahel, son of Amihud, the leader from the tribe of Naphtali. These are the men the Lord commanded to assign the inheritance to the Israelites in the land of Canaan. Chapter 35 On the plains of Moab, by the Jordan, across from Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, Command the Israelites to give the Levites towns to live in from the inheritance the Israelites will possess and give them pasture lands around the towns. Then they will have towns to live in, and pasture lands for their cattle, flocks, and all their other livestock. The pasture lands around the towns that you give the Levites will extend out 1,500 feet from the town wall. Outside the town, measure 3,000 feet on the east side, 3,000 on the south side, 3,000 on the west, and 3,000 on the north with the town in the center. They will have this area as pasture land for the towns. Six of the towns you give the Levites will be cities of refuge to which a person who has killed someone may flee. In addition, give them 42 other towns. In all, you must give the Levites 48 towns together with their pasture lands. The towns you give the Levites from the land the Israelites possess are to be given in proportion to the inheritance of each tribe. Take many towns from a tribe that has many, but few from one that has few. Then the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into Canaan, select some towns to be your cities of refuge, to which a person who has killed someone accidentally may flee. They will be places of refuge from the avenger, so that a person accused of murder may not die before he stands trial before the assembly. These six towns you give will be your cities of refuge. Give three on this side of the Jordan and three in Canaan as cities of refuge. These six towns will be a place of refuge for Israelites, aliens, and any other people living among them, so that anyone who has killed another accidentally can flee there. If a man strikes someone with an iron object so that he dies, he is a murderer. The murderer shall be put to death. Or if anyone has a stone in his hand that could kill, and he strikes someone so that he dies, he is a murderer. The murderer shall be put to death. Or if anyone has a wooden object in his hand that could kill, and he hits someone so that he dies, he is a murderer. The murderer shall be put to death. The avenger of blood shall put the murderer to death. When he meets him, he shall put him to death. If anyone with malice aforethought shoves another or throws something at him intentionally so that he dies, or if in hostility he hits him with his fist so that he dies, that person shall be put to death. He is a murderer. The avenger of blood shall put the murderer to death when he meets him. But if without hostility, someone suddenly shoves another or throws something at him unintentionally or without seeing him drops a stone on him that could kill him and he dies. Then, since he was not his enemy and he did not intend to harm him, the assembly must judge between him and the avenger of blood according to these regulations. The assembly must protect the one accused of murder from the avenger of blood and send him back to the city of refuge to which he fled. 
He must stay there until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the holy oil. But if the accused ever goes outside the limits of the city of refuge to which he has fled, and the avenger of blood finds him outside the city, the avenger of blood may kill the accused without being guilty of murder. The accused must stay in his city of refuge until the death of the high priest. Only after the death of the high priest may he return to his own property. These are to be legal requirements for you throughout the generations to come, wherever you live. Anyone who kills a person is to be put to death as a murderer, only on the testimony of witnesses. But no one is to be put to death on the testimony of only one witness. Do not accept a ransom for the life of a murderer who deserves to die. He must surely be put to death. Do not accept a ransom for anyone who has fled to a city of refuge, and so allow him to go back and live on his own land before the death of the high priest. Do not pollute the land where you are. Bloodshed pollutes the land, and atonement cannot be made for the land on which blood has been shed, except by the blood of the one who shed it. Do not defile the land where you live and where I dwell, for I, the Lord, dwell among the Israelites. Chapter 36 The family heads of the clan of Gilead, son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, who were from the clans of the descendants of Joseph, came and spoke before Moses and the leaders, the heads of the Israelite families. They said, When the Lord commanded my Lord to give the land as an inheritance to the Israelites by lot, he ordered you to give the inheritance of our brother Zelophehad to his daughters. Now, suppose they marry men from other Israelite tribes. Then their inheritance will be taken from our ancestral inheritance and added to that of the tribe they marry into. And so, part of the inheritance allotted to us will be taken away. When the year of Jubilee for the Israelites comes, their inheritance will be added to that of the tribe into which they marry and their property will be taken from the tribal inheritance of our forefathers. Then at the Lord's command, Moses gave this order to the Israelites. What the tribe of the descendants of Joseph is saying is right. This is what the Lord commands for Zelophehad's daughters. They may marry anyone they please, as long as they marry within the tribal clan of their father. No inheritance in Israel is to pass from tribe to tribe, for every Israelite shall keep the tribal land inherited from his forefathers. Every daughter who inherits land in any Israelite tribe must marry someone in her father's tribal clan, so that every Israelite will possess the inheritance of his fathers. No inheritance may pass from tribe to tribe, for each Israelite tribe is to keep the land it inherits. So Zelophehad's daughters did as the Lord commanded Moses. Zelophehad's daughters, Mala, Tirza, Hogla, Milcah, and Noah, married their cousins on their father's side. They married within the clans of the descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in their father's clan and tribe. These are the commands and regulations the Lord gave through Moses to the Israelites on the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho.